So who else knew that Zero Two could throw them hands? <laughs> now, when I say who's the master, you say so no. So another episode of Darling and the Franks is in the can. Another great episode from Studio Trigger and A1. A lot to get into, so I'm going to jump right into it. Man. So, we got a wedding and we almost got a funeral in this episode, boy. Whoo! I mean, seriously. So, this episode picks up right where we left off. And it looks like uh, Kokoro and Michiru, if, if any of you guys were... Uh, still on the fence on whether or not they had sex. Uh, looks like Kokoro put the business on them because the boy was still knocked out first thing in the morning. <laughs> so, uh, so they also came up with a great idea to uh, get married. So, at first when I saw the preview, I thought to myself, honestly, I was like, I know exactly how this is going to go down. Uh, they're going to have a wedding. It's going to be great. They're going to have this uh, happy, you know, go lucky uh, uh, situation go on, and then I thought next episode is where they dropped the bomb on us, the death flags were like, literally like, the death flags were waving right in my face, but it uh, looks like Studio Trigger did not go that route, because again, I thought that was going to happen next episode in episode 19, maybe they were moved off the plantation, and they were in a battle, and then both uh, uh, Kokoro and Mitsuru would get killed or something to that effect, but they didn't even wait to episode 19, so and when I say that, I don't mean they died, but uh, Ape and Papa, they decided that uh, they were going to break up that wedding quick smart, but before I get into that I want to jump back a little bit and talk about this uh, Ichigo, and uh, let me, let me, let me, let me go to the notes okay, I'll make sure I get these names right, oh, Ikano and Ichigo, yeah so, uh, Ikino and Ichigo kind of had their moment, so to speak. Uh, uh, Ichigo uh, goes in to check on Ikino because, again, you know, she has been very distant since uh, episode 17 where everyone uh, was upset at the nines and, you know, she had her outburst and slapped her. So, uh, it was very interesting to see how Studio Trigger uh, handled this situation because in other animes, this would have easily been one of those moments of the awkward stare and then oh, I don't know what I was thinking and then here we go running off again but again we should all have faith in Studio Trigger now because again they've shown that this story writing for this show is on a whole nother level hands down and, and you know what let me let me pause right let me pause right there real quick so I want to say something so when I first started watching Darling in the Franks I totally went into this show thinking it was going to be a Ichi uh, action, uh, Ichi action show with, uh, Max. Totally thought this is what I was getting at. Even the recommendation that I got on the show kind of came from that whole vein of it being like a, you know, Ichi Mech show with, you know, hot girls and, you know, in this little thing where their butts were sticking out. Like, again, it, it read like a Ichi anime from the start. But what Studio Trigger and one ended up doing is creating a show that just subverts your expectations completely and just gave you something that's not even really, um, to be honest with you, it's not even really a mech show. Uh, Darling and Franks is a, I would probably say it's a complicated drama with a little bit of action in it. And again, I'm not saying this in a negative way. Like, I love this show. I absolutely love this show. I look forward to Saturdays to watch this show. And it, 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 it takes me back to the days where I used to grab my bowl of cereal and sit down in front of the TV as a kid and watch my Saturday morning cartoons. So, like, I plan my days around watching Darling and the Franks, let me tell you. So, the fact that this studio could take me from here to where I thought this show was going to be about and then completely flip it on its head and turn it into a show. And again, admittedly, this show is not a lot of action in it. Like, if you look at it in its totality, there's probably a, a solid 10 to 15 minutes of action, and the rest of it is a, a, an amazing story with uh, human characters, and it's almost like a mystery trying to figure out what is going on in this world. So, again, I just wanted to touch on that because, again, we are already 18 episodes in, and it looks like we're about to start jumping back into the more action bits. But I just want to tell you that, again, this is what you can do with a great anime when you provide us with great storytelling and great world building. So anyway, as I left off, Ikano and Ichigo. 
So Ikano expresses her love for Ichigo and said, you know, it's ever since you gave me my name is when I had only had eyes for you. And uh, when she said that, I kind of thought back to myself and I was just thinking, I was like, is this really love or is this more so infatuation? Because again, as a child, you don't know what kind of feelings you have for another person. It's no different than what Mitsuru had feelings for, uh, if you want to call it that, for uh, Hiro. So, you know, uh, Hiro provided, uh, you know, provided all of them with names. So what was the difference between with Mitsuru was uh, he was basically, he looked up to Hiro. And you could have easily looked at that as sort of an infatuation, but with Ichigo and Ikano, it, it, it seemed a little weird, just kind of the way that she described it. Now, again, she kind of clarified a little bit later that, you know, it was more than that and that she didn't know what to do with her feelings. I'm not saying that her feelings aren't valid, but I kind of struggled from that perspective to see as a child, again, especially as a group of kids who don't really know what their feelings are about, is that really love that you're feeling for Ichigo, or is that some sort of admiration mixed with a little bit of an infatuation? So, uh, they don't even kiss. And again, I'm, I'm glad they didn't, because again, I think that would have been very out of place for Ichigo uh, to even kiss her back, because again, we've already seen that uh, Ichigo has had feelings for Goro in a way, and she's already had feelings for Hiro in a way. Not to say that she can have feelings for, you know, you know but you can know, but it would have just not been the right place, kind of like how they had it set up. Now, I do appreciate how Ichigo sat back and kind of let Ikano get her feelings out there and how she didn't reject her. It was more so kind of like an unspoken thing to say, hey, this isn't going to be easy, but I'm not going to reject you. We don't know what the future will hold. We don't know what's going on. So it kind of gives you that, 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 that window to say, hey, Something can happen, something may not happen, but it wasn't an outright, I don't I don't like you, I don't feel that same way about you. It was kind of just left out there in the ether, and I was really okay with that. Now, the wedding I was actually also really cool with as well. I thought it was a well-done wedding, especially for the limited knowledge they had. But thanks to uh, uh, Zero Two and Hero from their book, they were already you know, telling the kids about, hey, this is what a wedding is, what it means to be married, and the vows, and things like that. And especially from a married guy, I I get it. Like, I, I felt the heart warm. And again, that's exactly how you know that you are attached to a show because, again, it makes you feel a certain way about the characters and it makes you love them. So, needless to say, when their party was crashed, like, my heart dropped for a second. I was just like, what is Abe doing here? Why are they here this episode? Like, I did not see that coming at all. So... It was just very weird to see them attack these kids like that and just see exactly what's going on in the mindset of Ape and why do they hate human customs so much? Why do they hate the way that these people are having this more free-spirited thing? And I have a theory on that that I'm going to get to closer to the end of the video. But um, we actually get to see that uh, Zero Two is not to be fucked with. Like, again, she, she, she got them hands. Like, she was... She, I loved how everyone was doing their part to, you know, protect the, you know, uh, Kokoro and Mitsuru and, you know, just try to help them get out of that situation. Uh, even uh, Fushitoshi, Futoshi, you know, he was the guy, the quote unquote priest that was presiding over the ceremony. Even he kind of stepped in there and was like, hey guys, you got to get out of here. So I thought that was really good for his character to just kind of show that even though he's in love with Kokoro as well, he's able to move on past that situation and help them out. And again, like I said, Zero Two going after the Nines was absolutely amazing just to see her trying to protect her friends. Again, it was an amazing scene and I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, partially the reason why I chose it for the uh, thumbnail. So... Of course, you know, the Nines, they take down the team and they take away uh, Mitsuru and Kokoro so they can get indoctrinated again. Uh, and then they also take all the kids and they send them back to the bird uh, the bird sanctuary, bird cage, or whatever the hell it's, it's called. Basically back to where all the uh, other parasites are. Now, the other, only other interesting thing that I wanted to touch base on is Ape. Oh, and before that, Ape and Nana. My last two parts of them I'm going to uh, end this video. So... Again, the world building with Darling and Franks, we get some answers, we get more questions. So, first with Nana, we finally figure out her backstory as yes, she was a pilot, and it looks like uh, her partner was killed. Now, I'm not sure if this was in an explosion from a battle with the Klaxosaurs. I don't know if uh, Ape 
made them self-destruct because it looked like it was a giant explosion and out of that explosion uh, Nana survived but her partner did not so and it looks like she was also taken back and I guess her reaction back then they didn't give pilots emotions so her crying over her partner dying kind of uh, set them off and had ate them indoctrinate her and I guess that was the last time that she ended up being a pilot so you kind of get her backstory but it'll be very interesting because we also find out that when the group was actually separated you know it was also like Nana would have been the better person to be there to support the kids knowing that she had more feelings than who was actually there so the last thing I want to talk about is ape and escape from their shell. So that was the buzzword out of this entire episode that kind of stuck in my head was the whole ape wanting to escape from their shells. What does that mean? Uh, so they talk about how they try to have their meeting with the Calaxis or Princess and how that did not go according to plan. And the other members of Ape talking about that was also in their calculations. And essentially, they want to create a perfect world with uh, with with Ape and with humanity. Why are they talking about those things in a separate format? Like they're not the same. And what I'm starting to think is, again, I've, I've talked about this little by little in some of my other videos, but I'm really, really starting to nail down on that whole Papa ape thing or artificial intelligence. And I don't think there are actual bodies within those, that robot shell. Because again, if you go back to last week's episode, you see that the classic or princess says, you know, human wannabes. So to me, that just goes to show me that maybe that the uh, AI somehow wants to get some sort of uh, new human bodies or evolutionary bodies to transfer their consciousness in. Because I don't, I think it's basically an artificial intelligence that's are inside of those robot suits, and there is just hollow. Like there are no, there are no physical bodies in there. So that's one of my theories, and I think their grand plan is to use uh, zero two as the other key and performs perform what i don't know that 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 part just still escapes me but i really do think that this is some sort of a artificial intelligence because otherwise why do they hate humanity so much that all the traditions everything that made humans humans they want to get rid of you want if you have any sort of emotions they want to indoctrinate you they don't want you know other than pilot and franks they don't even want you having reproductive organs to reproduce maybe they think that this is an evolutionary trait that's not no, no longer necessary like it's it's just very very weird but i want to know what you guys think as well as well comment in the section below thumbs up the video again Thank you guys so much for all the support that you guys have been giving me and the, th the thumbs up, the subscriptions. Everything is great. Uh, Shun of the King. Have a great day.